Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Thank you for staying with us. The conversation continues, and this time we are heading over to the diaspora to find out exactly how we can start to bridge the diaspora ahead of the 2019 elections. And so how are you doing today? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. So I think we should start off by getting to know you. You've lived both in the UK and in Nigeria, yes. and you're literally in there when it comes to politics. So tell us who Aziz Quadri is. Um, I'm somebody that is really passionate about politics. and. Um, not necessarily the, the leadership aspect, but the communications aspect. I feel like citizens should be properly informed before they make any decisions whatsoever. And for me, um, I always say that anybody can do communications, but proper and strategic communications is about communicating the right message to the right people at the right time. If you don't get all three in sync, then you're not, your message is not going to go, your message is not going to travel mm. far. And I feel like in Nigeria especially, people don't have the proper communication they need to make informed decisions when it comes to elections. Interesting. Would you say that that's a clear difference between politics in the UK and here in Nigeria, or do those problems also exist in the UK policy? Um, a bit of both. Um, the U those problems also, they, they also, you know, they're also in the UK more so amongst the young people because they feel like, or I, feel, I, I what the sense that I get is they feel like um, they're, very, they're very far away from politicians, but they can't really relate to politicians. So when it comes to them engaging in politics, they, re you know, they really take a backseat. I mean, if you really quickly, if you look at one of the biggest referendums the UK has ever had, um, which was the Brexit vote, a lot of people came out and voted in that because politicians brought them in. They felt like they were amongst. Whereas when you look at past UK elections, it, you know, it, it's not the same case. And it, it's the same in Nigeria. I, mm. I feel like people feel like they're so far away from politicians and the, the communication and the distance between them and politicians is so far that they de and, and then, of course, you've got the problem of Nigerian politicians just tend to do whatever they like when they get into power. So Interesting. people just stay away from politics. Interesting. Now, I'm often concerned because... Nigeria's diaspora is 10% of our country's GDP. And when it comes to election time, obviously, if you're in the diaspora, you, you can't vote, OK? Yeah, so first of all, I want to ask you for your opinion on this. Do you believe that people in the diaspora should be able to vote in Nigeria's elections, if they're Nigerian citizens, of course? No. Why? I feel I feel like you should, for, for you to make, for you to be able to participate in elections, you should be living in the country. I feel like... Um, because everybody wants different things, and, and you find that in, in politics anyway. Everyone wants different things. But the level that the, the people in the diaspora, what the things they're thinking of, the things that they're surrounded by, the organization and the structure that they're surrounded by makes their judgment very much different to so those in Nigeria. that's 10% of Nigeria's GDP. They are contributing, per se, no? They're contributing, but as, as, as far as I'm concerned, they mm. still don't live in the country. So the things that are affecting the country immediately don't necessarily affect them. Interesting. OK, so how do you feel we can bridge the diaspora ahead of the 2019 elections? For me, I, and even though I say they can't vote, I think the, the Nigerians in the diaspora have a major part when it comes, to, especially to Nigerian yeah. elections, because they have a major voice with the family members that they have in Nigeria. They have um, a major voice to persuade their family members that listen, this is out of, out of all of your candidates. This is the person that is saying the things that make more sense. And for me, they they come from a very unbiased point of view because once again, they don't live in the country. Yeah, they're not going through the struggles of traffic, the struggles of poverty, the struggles of you know the different struggles that people that live here are going through. So they're coming from a very unbiased point of view. So they can look at it from a very narrow mind point and narrow they can look at it from a very open mind point sorry and say this is the person that is actually making the most sense and mm -hmm. you'll find that even though they're 10 percent you know in the diaspora they have a lot of family here and they look they have a lot of influence 
over their family members in Nigeria. Okay, interesting. Now, 2019 elections aside, one problem that I believe a lot of people have surfaced on the internet is the fact that there's some sort of disenfranchisement when it comes to the diaspora and us here in Nigeria. And people have called on the government saying you need to find ways to actually start including your diaspora, to actually start appreciating your diaspora. You've lived in the UK for how many years did you live there? Um, all my life, so 20, 27 years. Wow, okay, so for 27 years, you've lived in the UK for 27 years. Did you feel the connection that you wanted to feel to Nigeria? Not until very recently. So, I mean, I, I have to thank my mum because growing up, I was one of those people that I used to come to Nigeria every single year without failure. I never had a summer holidays in the UK. Me too. Yeah, she would <laughs> literally, once that six weeks comes, you're going back to Nigeria. So, um, up until, from very young, up until the time I was, what, 15, 16, which mm. is when she stopped paying for my ticket, um, <laughs> I used to come to Nigeria yeah. every year. And I didn't really feel a sense of connection then, but when I started coming to Nigeria alone, and when I started making friends in Nigeria, and when I started doing a lot of research on, on Nigerian politics and seeing how bad the Nigerian economy is and seeing the poverty that lies in the country, um, I started to get that connection. And it's all well and good being in the UK, being in, you know, being somewhere where you're, you're structured, being somewhere where you're comfortable, yeah. there's security. But once you start to feel that connection, it's then very hard to get rid of it. Because, so for instance, I was in Nigeria in, before now, I was in Nigeria in December. When mm. I was going back in January, I was saying to myself, why the hell am I leaving this yeah. country? Like, yeah. I feel so much more important here. I feel like my- First class citizenship. Yeah, I feel like my um, my skills could be put to better use here. I feel like Nigeria, even though a lot of people have given up on it, I haven't personally. I'm, I feel like I'm one of the few people that still believes in this country. Me too. That still <laughs> believes that this country can yeah. go far. Um, and I'm not. I, I realize that I'm not going to make an impact if I'm sitting in the UK working for someone else and because every it's the same problem in the UK everyone that sits in the UK will complain about how oh I can't live in Nigeria Nigeria is this Nigeria is that really and truly I don't want to be there all my life so from the diaspora you kind of get that sense of not necessarily actually even wanting to really get that involved exactly so you, okay. you get that and, and that's because that's also because a lot of people in the diaspora their family members are telling them, I want to leave this place. This place is this, this place is that. Our leaders are this, our leaders are that. So when you're, when you're in the diaspora and you're hearing that, you're not going to feel any sense of connection to Nigeria whatsoever. Yeah. If your family members that are there are not exactly doing very well and they're looking for a way out as well. Yeah, very interesting, very interesting. Now, you're a political strategist and I want us to touch on the strategy of the citizen. Unfortunately, voters' education is quite rare in Nigeria today and the statistics to back that up are quite worrying. What do Nigerian citizens need to start looking for and looking at going ahead towards the 2019 polls? Well, um, they need to start looking at a lot. They need to start looking for a lot. For me, we've, so 20 years of democracy mm. next year. What has worked, what hasn't worked? Which parties have worked, which parties haven't worked? There are two major political parties in Nigeria. Um, have they worked? It, I'll leave that to the people to decide. I won't comment on that. Yeah. But for me, it's like, if you have a headache and um, the headache is constant, it's constant, and you're using the same drug and your headache is not going. Do you continue to use the same drug? Absolutely not. So people need to look for the person that's going to give them the proper leadership that they're looking for. Not the person that's going to come and make them promises, but the person that's going to come and show them a plan. The person that's going to come that's going to make them feel included. Um, I always say that there are two types of people in Nigeria. There are the people who... They are the Nigerians, and I, and I hate using this word sometimes, but they're the Nigerians who are very short-sighted. Mm. And it's not their fault. Mm. I want to make clear that it's not their fault that they're mm. short-sighted. They've been... Disempowered from Disempowered birth. to the point yeah. where they... By our leaders or by our rulers, to the point where they have to be short-sighted. They have to think about the now and what they can get now. And then they're the Nigerians that are comfortable, they're doing well, children are in private mm. school, they have a house, they have a car, and to themselves, they think... If I, get, if I don't get involved in politics, it's not really going to change my situation. Mm. And that's the worst possible mindset to have because 
they are the ones that have to realize that their children are coming into this world. What do they want to leave for their children? How, what, what kind of country? What kind of legacy? How do they want their children to grow up? Um, is everyone going to get up and move outside of Nigeria? No. Some people are going to be here. Some people are going to grow up here. And if you keep saying to yourself that policy, whether I vote or not, or whoever I vote for, it's not going to change my situation, you are doing yourself such a major, major... Dis it's like you're physically yeah. harming yourself. To, to me, I, I can't... Fa especially in a country that's doing so bad, citizens have to realise that it's that it's that power that's been given to them, that power of voting, that power of being able to make a decision of who is going to lead us out of the crisis that we're currently in. That's the biggest form of power that they could have. Absolutely. And that's why I also feel like I need your opinion on this. OK, so in 2015, less than 30 million citizens voted on Election Day. So that means that over 40 million registered voters actually did not come out to vote. OK, and that is very dangerous for Nigeria ahead of 2019. Are we looking at a similar situation? And if so, how do we get out of it? Because it's one thing for people like me to sit here every day and go, you have two days left, get your PVC. You've got one day left, get your PVC. It's another thing for people to actually physically get up, get out, and register, and register. for their PVC. Yeah. Um, for me, it's people have to look at it. In, well, for, first of all, I'm not really too sure why um, voter registration ends in two weeks with the election being next year February. Oh, that was because of the additional um, political parties. So now we have 91 parties, no. which I'm also going to touch on with you in a bit. But no. let's, <laughs> let's do this Nigeria one first. Nigeria never ceases to amaze me. Um, but so, sorry, come with that question again. OK, so do you believe that we're looking at a similar situation in terms yeah. of low voters turnout ahead of 2019? I hope not. I feel like more so now than in 2015, people have... Because a lot of people bought this idea of change in 2015. And a lot of people have seen that that change hasn't come um, or the change they were looking. Let me not say that change hasn't come. The specific change they were looking for hasn't come. Um, and I feel like a lot of people are starting to I don't want to say wake up because I don't believe Nigerians are asleep. But a lot of people are starting to realize that, listen, our country is getting so bad and it's getting worse. We've become the poverty capital of the world. Mm. We have more poor people in Nigeria than in, in any yeah. other country in the world. People are starting to see that and realise that. People are listening to the president call Nigerian youth lazy and they're thinking, are, are you joking? What, are, are you actually... We are here busting our butts every single day yeah. in a bad economy, in an economy where there are no or hardly yeah. any jobs and you're still out here slandering us. So people, I, I feel like people are starting to wake up to that. And I feel like the youths as well. And when I once again, it's not, not a word that I like to use, the youths, the youths, the youths. But I feel like people between the ages of 18 and 35, 40, mm. are, are, whether, you know, working class, middle class, higher class, they're starting to realise that we have to do something about this. We have to take back control of our country. Um, so I hope, I really, really hope that... The, the turnout this year is is going to be a lot more than 2015. And I feel like the youths that I mentioned are the ones that have the power to actually decide this election. They... And unfortunately, the ones with the power have been disempowered. So now we have a very complex situation. What is the strategy to getting out of that situation? It's enlightenment. It's literally... Spe it, it's sensitising people. Um, if you remember... The um, I was we were both very young then, mm -hmm. but the Abiola election yeah. that he won, the reason why Abiola won that election is because he was able to wake up a fire mm -hmm. in people. He was able to light a fire in mm -hmm. people to let them know that this is not the Nigeria that you want to live in. This is not the Nigeria that you want to go forward with. This is not with. the Nigerian dream. This is not the Nigerian dream. And Abiola was able to light that fire within people so that to the point where everyone came out to vote. Everyone came out to have their voice heard. And I feel like that is the strategy to this. It's, I don't want to... It's more than just talking to yeah. people. It's, it, there's, a, there's a difference between talking to someone and igniting someone, making someone open their eyes and actually see what this country is about, mm. actually see where we're heading to, mm. actually see where our politicians are taking us to and actually tell them that, you have the power 
to, uh, you know, to let us come out of this. You have the power Absolutely. to change this completely. So for me, it's, there's a difference between talking and actually igniting something in someone. I feel you. So it's, it's a sense of sensitization. I me. feel you. Makes a lot of sense. One last question because we have to round up. What is your view on the addition uh, that INEC has made to the number of political parties in Nigeria? Because I know in the UK where you resided, there are less than 20 political parties. And now here in Nigeria, we have 91 ahead of 2019. How does that make you feel in just a few words? ashamed of Nigeria completely 91 political parties where what do you want to like it, and it should show people that they're so they're so much after that mm. power that power is what they're looking for they don't care about the Nigerian citizens um Nigerians just have to I don't, I don't even want to say pray but Nigerians just have to look for the parties that 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 resonate with them look for the parties that are saying the things that they want to hear, look for the parties that will actually do the things that require this country to come out of Brilliant. the slump that it's in. Brilliant. I couldn't have said it better myself. Aziz, it's been an absolute pleasure having you, you on you Hello Nigeria much. with me. Thank you so much for this insight. I'm sure it was great for the viewer. How can people contact you on social media for more information? Um, my Instagram is at AO Quadri, Quadri spelled with a Y, so Q U A D R Y. And then my uh, Twitter handle is G underscore, underscore O underscore Q. Okay, so G underscore O underscore Q on Twitter and AO Quadri with a Y at the end on Instagram. We've had Aziz Quadri in the building, ladies and gentlemen. To enjoy more of this, our Ubunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.